So hey there fellow YouTubers, Frank Bush here again. So in today's video, I'm going to show a new design I've come up with for uh, doing whoopee slings that are conventionally used with hammock camping and that kind of stuff. But I'm going to show how you can do it with any cordage. I'm going to use paracord in the example today, but I'm going to show how you could do a simple whoopee sling design without having to get into all the complexities like you see when they do the Dyneema ones and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that kind of content, stay tuned, yeah? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just quickly walk through the items that are going to be needed for this project, yeah? So here I've got a spool of 550 paracord. That's, uh, you know, standard paracord like you'd see conventionally used in bushcraft stuff. I've, I've got just like a thousand foot of it, so I'll, I'll use a portion of this in the project. I've got my multi-tool just so I can do some cutting and the knife to mount the ends of the paracord, that kind of thing. And I've got uh, measuring tape and I've got this board that has two screws attached. And really this board is just going to be like an extra set of hands to help me kind of do things as I go. You know, so it's not critical when it comes to things. You could use a variety of other things, but in this example, it'll be just the easiest way to show you and keep it still clean on the camera. Yeah. So one way or the other, we'll just um, stop with the shenanigans of chatting about it and let's get on with the build. Okay, so I just kind of cleared off the workspace a bit, so I got a little room to do things. And this is my spool sitting just over here, and I'm running the line off. Yeah, I haven't cut anything or any of that business at this point in time. So I'm just going to turn around and put my measuring tape out. And I want to get that where I can see at least 18 inches, which is here to here, yeah? So I'm just going to measure that off now. Figure out where that 18 inch point is. Now from there, I'm just going to bring it back on itself. Uh, take a bit more off the spool. I'm going to bring it back on itself as such. And right here, I'm just going to put an overhand knot into it. And this part will be similar if you've seen the previous video I put out. This part will be similar to that in its construct. Where I'm just putting a little, like I say, a little overhand knot. Nothing special here. Now... I'll just get my measuring tape out of the way. Uh, I'm going to walk up every couple inches here, about an inch and a half, two inches, and I'm just going to put another overhand knot as I go. So, really simple knots. No, nothing to, to write home about or any of that business. And I'm just going to put in a couple of these up, at least four of them, coming up this line, where I'm trying to keep them evenly spaced within reasons as good as possible i'll put one more in i kind of set that there so that'll be the first portion if you will like i say it was the 18 inches folded on itself i put a knot on that end and just work knots back up this way so that'll be the first component i'll shift camera angles and we'll set up for the next part of the build yep Okay, so the next thing I'm going to want to do in this process is just put this board out to kind of give me a bit of length, you know, relativity, if you will. But uh, I want to run it out, you know, say about a foot and a half or so. This isn't exact science stuff. You guys can adjust this to whatever you feel your needs are. But I'm going to turn around and right at this point, I'm just going to bring it all through itself and create a little just single overhand knot here, you know. I can say nothing complex. Just simply put a knot in that location. And it doesn't even have to be super tight. You can adjust that later on. And now the thinking is going to be, I'm going to want to, how I tied these four knots here. There's little spaces that exist in between, yeah? I'm going to take that first space and just hook it on one of the screws I've got in this board, just so i got a place I can kind of lock onto. And I want to bring the other end of this cordage. I want to bring it up and around this other nail and bring it back and really i'm just doing this to kind of like i say act as a helping hands if you will to make it easier so what i'll do is i'll adjust my camera angle and i'll come in close for the knot that i'm about to do next yeah okay so like i say i've got it all set up on the board now where this is the end we originally started with we're just running around and i've got this line this part of the line just goes off the spool nothing's been cut yet at this point so when it comes to on this side now, I want to pull it where I create a loop. So I'm kind of pulling this part over top of and just creating a loop here. And it can be a fairly generous sized loop. I want it to be, you know, 
fair decent size. And like I say, this part's gonna sit on top of that. And it's gotta be that this loop is created before this knot, that little overhand knot we put in, yeah? So the thinking really is I'm gonna lay this line now. I'm just gonna lay that. This is the part going off to the spool. I'm gonna lay that down on top of here. And I'm gonna take the loop. I'm gonna wrap it around this. I'm gonna wrap it three times. That's once, that's twice. We now have three times, and I still have a pocket sitting on this side, yeah? Hopefully the camera's catching this clear. So now what I plan on doing is the end that we started with, I'm gonna pick up that cordage now. I'm gonna bring that across and feed that right through the whole thing that we created in the beginning. And just pull all the knots through, get all of that in. And now I'm gonna start to dress up this knot. I know it looks like a bit of a mess at this point in time, but gonna dress this up now and it'll start to look more and more like a prusik as we apply the tension and kind of dress this knot and it'll come all clean you want to make sure all your lines are sitting nice to each other and all that business just like you would in a prusik line and when I kind of cinch it up and it's gonna look like a bit of a fuddled mess to start with And like I say, I'm just applying tension now to all these points. And now, right behind this knot... Okay, I had to set up a different light because I know that this dark cordage, it's hard to see, and I really want to kind of show with clarity this knot. But on this line that runs here, I want to put another little overhand knot right in behind here. I'll be setting that in there. And I'll just pop this off the jig for a second and bring it up close to show you what this should look like. So, hopefully... Yeah, the lighting's a bit better in that regard. So I know it looks like a bit of a fuddled mess because this knot just kind of has that look to it. But that's the thinking really is, on this side you can see it looks more like a Prusik loop style where you can see the bands laying over top of each other. Whereas on this side, it just looks like the cordage has got that little loop coming around and catching on this side. But this is the side where, just to make this more permanent now, the end that was you know, what we started with. I'm just gonna do a little overhand knot here, then I'm gonna put this on, and then I'm just gonna set that and dress it right up near that where, where the knot came through. So, and I'll just set that as tight and close as I can to here. And this just helps ensure that this knot never comes loose and never frees up or any of that business, and keeps this as kind of a permanent set. So there you have it. And generally speaking, this whoopee sling is now already fully built. So I've got this line that runs off to the spool. I'll just shift my camera angle here and kind of give myself a little bit more room to work with. I just wanted to get really up close, like I say, to kind of show you this fuddled mess, which is the knot. But it's really effective in what it does in this regard. But hopefully you got clarity with that. And I've shown this modified pheromone hitch in multiple other videos in the past as well in the bushcraft stuff. That this is a knot I really like to use when I'm out in the field a fair bit. But like I say, this will be the line that's still connected to the spool running off. We haven't cut anything at this point in time. So let me shift camera angles and we'll kind of give you a cleaner example of how this thing works now. Okay. So now just to show you here. So we've got the loop on this end and the loop on this end now on the line that's still connected to the spool that's a free running line i can pull that all the way back to that little stopper knot we put in early on in the video where once it hits there it stops this loop from pulling in on itself and kind of closing permanently and that's why we put that little knot on there but i can slide this out now to be any length so the thinking really is right now i've got it where if i pull and apply tension here it'll lock and hold but i can slide this now and make it even longer and now that cordage becomes even longer and depending on the length that i decide to cut what the part that's going off to the spool here i can go any length i want with this within reason i can take this out 15 20 foot of length if you will and it'll just make it that 
this now becomes an adjustable piece of cord that'll lock at any point that I set it at. So if I set it at that length, it'll just lock and hold there. Then it can take tension under load. I'll take this out into the field and I'll show you. But the first order of business that I, well, the last order of business, I guess it would be, that I need to do is just pull a length of cordage now to come off of my spool to whatever length I want to make is the maximum length that this will be able to kind of run out to and uh, put a little overhand knot in the end. So I'll just quickly go off and do that off camera. And uh, like I say, all I'm going to do is snip it. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to go off camera. I'll measure it out to a good length that I'm happy with. And then I'll just snip it and put an overhand knot on the end of it as like a stopper knot. And this whoopee sling will be 100% completed at that point in time. So let me just go and figure out what kind of length I want. And like I say, this is arbitrary. It's all up to you for how long you want to make these whoopee slings be their maximum length and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I'll go off and do that. And uh, we'll wrap this up. Then I'll take it out into the field and we'll show you examples of using this. Okay, so I measured it out where I'm going to give myself a whoopee sling that's max length of about 10-15 feet or so. So I'm simply just going to take my multi-tool, cut that paracord, and melt the ends. And just to make sure it doesn't fray or any of that business, right? So it should be good in that regard. And now, like I say, for the finishing touch, I mean, you can do fancier knots here and stuff, but I'm really just showing the simplest examples we can do, right? Of, like I say, just put a little overhand knot in here. No, nothing to it. And I'm just going to give myself a little tag so I get something to pull on. I tend to do that when I'm doing these types of knots. I just set it in. And it's as simple as that. So I'll show one more scene of kind of what it looks like as a finished whoopee sling. And you can go off and make multiples of these types of things, you know? And use them when you're out in the field but one way or the other i'll just kind of uh get a visually you know decent looking show of the finished whoopee sling and then we'll take it out in the field and start using it yeah okay so like i say this is the completed whoopee sling now so this is the end we started with where we put the four knots and the little loop on the end it comes out there's the little knot to stop it from loosening this modified pheromone hitch and then the other knot we have is sitting right here. And then this is just the free line that runs off to make this whoopee sling as large as we want it to be. In this example, I've done it off, like I say, so it'll create about a 10, 15 foot whoopee sling. And then I put a simple stopper knot on the end. So there's not much to these things. They're pretty elementary to build once you get to know the modified pheromone hits primarily and uh, kind of how to do it in the right order. But uh, for the next scenes, why don't we just take this out into the field and I'll show you the versatility of using these whoopee slings as an adjustable length piece of piece of cordage yeah so let me cut angles we'll come back when we're out in the back country if you will and uh we'll kind of push on with the video all right fellow youtubers so i'm out in one of the local wooded areas that i have and i brought along with me in the previous video i did i showed how to build out this modular rope craft system sitting here so i brought along that to help aid the example and then this here is the uh, whoopee sling where i've just bundled it up and i'll walk through that as part of the video as well but uh i'm not going to do huge examples out here it'll be pretty self-evident once you see how this thing works if you've never seen them before so i'll just uh get on with it yeah okay so the first thing i'm going to do is just give myself an anchor point on this tree right here so if you've watched the previous um, video on the modular rope craft system, you're going to see how this is done. But in essence, I'm just giving myself a point to strap onto here. So I'm onto that tree now. And now I'm going to hook on my whoopee sling to this. So I'll cut angles and uh, I'll cut back. Okay, so like I say, I've just got one of those, well, two actually, of those modular components that I did in the previous video. I'm just going to take one end of the whoopee sling and I'm going to hook it on to this so I'm just going to feed the loop through the modular rope craft system I'm going to bring this up now and I'm just going to hook one of the knots into itself so that I can lock it at that point and now this modular rope craft system is now strapped to this whoopee sling and see if I'm getting this on camera at all yeah I'll shift my camera angles and give this better justice but either way you can see it's really simple to kind of hook on 
the whoopee sling onto these modular rope craft systems and I'll like I say I'll shift camera angles to give this better justice. Like I say I've strapped the modular rope craft system to the tree just to give me a point to brace onto easily. Now this is the shortest distance pretty well that this whoopee sling will go. I can pull on this here and if I apply tension it's not going anywhere I'm locked on but right at this point now I can turn around and I've got it all hanked up and I'll just slide a bit out of the hank. I can turn around right here and if I push here and slide this, I can turn around and free this up so that this whoopee sling can grow in size. So I'll just do that now. And now I'm a little bit longer and I'll have to check the camera, but I'll pop this down. I got this fairly tight, this knot, because I want this to have a good hold. So, but I've got about, 15 foot or so of line here and I can keep pulling that line as soon as I let off tension I can keep pulling that line through here and make this whoopee sling longer and longer so I'll step the camera back a little bit further and we'll show I'll hook on to a tree that's sitting over here and to show you that I can hook on at pretty well any distance now so let me just shift camera angles again. I know I'm kind of bouncing the camera around a bit, but just the space I'm in is kind of awkward. But I'll uh, shift the camera angles again, and I'll show you how we can make this whoopee sling go from being really short to being really long, yeah? Okay, so I've got another one of my modular rope craft system bits of cordage here. I'm just gonna use that to hook onto this tree, just to give me something to lock onto, yeah? So, one way or the other, I'm connected to there now. And when it comes to this whoopee sling now, I can turn around and just let that hank all drop out. I can turn around here though, and at this point in time, I can just pull through all the extra length I need here. And it'll make it that I can start to reach from one tree to another. This is already a little bit too long, and that's fine, because I can easily turn around and now hook my modular rope craft system I just hook that into it just to kind of strap it on here and that's under a bit of tension now when I come back to this whoopee sling in order to tighten this whole setup up you can see it's all really loose right now I can simply just turn around and pull on this cable and bring everything back and it comes right up to a tight rope and hopefully you can see I'm applying enough tension where I'm causing that tree to want to pull towards me and I can pull tons and tons of tension right here. And this is holding, it'll be locked, it's not going anywhere. Now it's really good in that regard, and you can see now, my whoopee sling is at about a six foot width. I've still got some extra cable, so I can take this out to 10, 15 feet if I want. I Now, when it comes to the modular rope craft system, as I've shown in the previous video, I can easily just break this here and it'll be quick release, and it'll go. But I can also turn around and loosen the tension now off on this whoopee sling, where, like I say, uh, I, I just grab onto the cordage, I grab onto it, and on where that knot is, where that modified pheromone hitch is, I just literally pull right there. And I can pull this out, and it gives me back my loose tension there. So I'll shift camera angles, and I'll come up and I'll show that up close to show you kind of the ease of doing this. Like I say, I know I made this knot a little tight, but I like it that way. I like having everything stiff where it's a bit of work to pull, and that way it never does give, there's never any issues. But, but you can see, just by loosening that off, I could actually make this substantially longer. I've already got a lot of sag in this line, but it's just that simple to be able to bring the tension back to it again, and I'm back into tight enough to move trees, right? So like I say, I'll shift the camera and come in close and just show this sliding so you can see exactly that part in detail yeah so like I say I'll try to keep this all on camera as cleanly as possible but in order to give it tension to this system I hold right at this part of the knot right where it drops off like a drop line I hold right here and I just push and it allows me to apply the tension and I'm already I'm already making a tight line there and I've got a lot of tension on that line let me just shift you up a little bit I've already got lots of tension on that line. It's good and firm. And when I want to break it, if you remember, we put the one that had the knot on the one side, you want to take the other side, and right here, I just want to pull that back against that knot. And it loosens, it breaks the tension. I just got to shift my body here. It breaks that tension, and I'm literally like holding and pushing on the knot. I'm holding and pushing it that way. 
so it allows me to kind of bust everything free and I'm loose again really easily so hopefully that gives you a good example whatever length I set this at though when I apply this tension wherever it applies to if it's at this point say it's locked and held it's not going anywhere there's no give it's, it's, it's all in the control of the length all by this part right here and as soon as you apply tension in any way it'll lock so if I want to have this at a really short distance like I say right now I've got it at what 10 foot or so in width but it's easy enough to have shorter distances where I could connect these things as well and like I say I'll apply as much tension as I can I'm moving that tree hard now and that's on there that's that's totally firm it's not going anywhere so one of the uh, other things I should show in this video too is how to hank all this stuff up so it sits nice in your bag so this is now the whoopee sling down to its smallest length yeah I'm just gonna turn around and take the drop line part that gives us the kind of overall size flexibility and I'm gonna hook that through my fingers and let the whoopee sling sit on the back of my hand as such and then I'm just gonna start taking the lead line if you will that came off that gives us the length and just giving it figure eight wraps across my hand so I can bundle this all back into position now this is all a quick release bundle and when it comes down to the end now I'm just gonna turn around and squeeze pull my thumb out I'm gonna squeeze this bundle all together as such and then I'm gonna just wrap it around this way And I bundle it all up nice and clean. And oh, I get an extra little knot in the line. These things happen often. But I'm going to bring that around. And then I just take that knot with the little tag there. I just take that knot and stuff it in underneath the last one, if you will, as such. And then just kind of pull it a bit to give it tight. And now what this allows now is when it comes to hooking on these whoopee slings I've got both my loops free and able to connect so I can connect to something and keep this all bundled up until I need to draw it out so technically this doesn't ever have to touch the ground or anything else you know it can sit in a nice clean bundle in my bag but uh, there you have it paracord whoopee slings it's all right there fellow youtubers Thanks for joining me on this video if you managed to make it this far. Like I say, the paracord slings are not something I generally would use heavily myself because I like those modular rope craft systems and the ultimate ridge lines I've done in previous videos. So if you haven't seen any of that kind of content, I recommend you go back and watch some of my previous rope craft videos. But I do think that these things are handy in the regards of, you know, you've got this adjustable piece of cordage now with two loops on the end and it allows you to, you know, run varying lengths and that kind of stuff. Ideally, I would tend to use more of like the uh, Kevlar cordage or something like that where I know I can put a lot of load onto these typically these are used for doing things like uh, hammock hangs and those types of stuff you know they're not typically used for ridge lines or you know that stuff very often I mean they do but they don't so needless to say um, you know I just showed this as kind of the common man example you could do the exact same thing with hollow braided cord even you know where if you didn't want to do all the burying and all that kind of stuff all these knots are easily loosenable of in the regards of I can untie all these knots and bring it back to a single piece of cordage um, uh, with relative ease it's not a complex thing but I know that unless you have Dyneema and stuff conventional whoopee slings are kind of out of the question and you can buy them online but they tend to be overpriced for what people sell for what you're getting you know for a little bit of cordage they're charging 30 40 50 bucks blah blah so hopefully this is just another thing you can add to your toolkit I really want to just put out a quick video before Christmas came I know that the holidays are going to kind of take up a bit of time and that kind of stuff so I wanted to make sure I got a video before then and uh, as it goes for the next video or two coming I'll give you an idea of 
as far as I understand it to be, I've got a company that's uh, sending me a solar generator, so I'll be reviewing that in the video. There's a lot of different things I want to do. Uh, there's uh, Apocalypse Cheese. I've talked about that to some friends. They're wondering where the video is and why I haven't put that out yet. Of and uh, really, there's. Uh, that's like shelf stable cheese that I can, you know, you can have it sit in your pantry for 30 years and then pull it off and start making some cheese. So needless to say, that'll be a relatively quick video. I'm hoping to maybe get that out before Christmas. But uh, as it goes for the New Year's, I've still got lots more content coming. But uh, like I say, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching, yeah? Cheers.